Hey folks, how's it going, Dr. Spin? Eclectic Gun Reviews and General Musical Meanderings. Day late, dollar short, finally got this recording done a couple weeks behind. Six albums, things are listening to sort of at the end of summer. Represents a big time where things are starting to change for me and always music gets imprinted really strongly for me during that time. So these are really big key albums, I think, going forward. So let's go and get started. First one I got up is... Pepe Deluxe's Comic Sonics. I've been sort of circling Pepe Deluxe for quite a while now, and finally, like, the admonitions of, of Kyle over there at All Media Reviews finally made me take the dive on this one. I'd kind of been thinking about it. And, and its eclectic nature kind of ties it a little bit to the music of things like Mr. Bungle and that sort of thing, but it's not nearly that heavy. I, I think it pulls a lot more on things like Parliament Funkadelic in the late 70s and early 60s as its basis for its sort of diversions into different things. And not only musically, but just sonically, there's, a, there's such a wide variety of things that are pulled on in this album. There's passage in here that's, that's done on a, an ancient bone flute. Uh, there's the sound of a 747 jet, and that's all smoothed over with these kind of strangely accessible, but still like stylistically challenging pieces. And that combination really makes this album overall flow really well, keeps it really interesting, and definitely one that I would suggest. Next up, I got Joanna Wang's Hotel La Rue. Another really, really eclectic release, but one that leans a little bit more heavily, I think, into kind of pop styles. But I think that really confines it to put it in that box because although, yes, there are some kind of poppy elements in here, there's some guitar rock, I think it's the basis of the album. It really leans over some really progressive rock type stuff, which I love. A great keyboard, mo, mo keyboard noodling. That's always a, a surefire way into my heart to hear that sort of thing. Really catchy and crafty songs. And ones, again, that, that have a lot of intellect hiding below the surface. One of the most twisted, crazy songs that I think of this year that I've heard harmonically is the tune, There She Smiles. This is a very uh, accessible melody over the top. It's these really disorienting harmonic turns that still work with the melody unbelievably, but to follow them along it feels like it's just constantly shifting from one thing to the next. It's very disorienting, but you never still lose the essence of the melody. It's what really ties the song together. It still feels like a pop song that you could follow along with and just sing. The one thing that kind of puts me ill at ease about this album is that it's one of those situations where you have a lot of tracks, but a lot of them are very short. And again, usually for me, that points to kind of unfinished ideas, and maybe to a degree that's happening on this album, but the idea ideas themselves are so well crafted that even though I'd like to see some some more meat on the bones as far as putting more structure on that that material uh, in the end I still find that the piece is enjoyable Next up, I got La Luz, News of the Universe. Really creative album, I think, from this all-female California group quartet. And if I was going to describe this in any one-word um, genre identification, I'd call it psychedelic, psychedelia. But definitely, I think, leaning towards the kind of late 60s psychedelia, it's got a very sort of sunny side to it. I get the sense when I listen to it that it's recalling things like almost like the mamas and the papas. That that level, that, that time frame of almost folky... Uh, psychedelia. And it's got kind of a lo-fi aspect to it. I, although the, the production itself is pretty well fleshed out, it still captures a really earthy aesthetic that, it, again, I think ties it to that, that late 60s sense that I'm getting out of it. And it's also permeated by this very live, organic feel. I'm not going to go so far to say there's not a click track on this album, but it definitely has the sense that human hands are on it, and I always find that feel. Next up, I got Empathogen by Willow. Most recent album by Willow Smith, who you know got to cut her teeth in her earlier in her career with really pop-oriented songs, um, certainly more al aligned with the kind of music that her father got his his 
you know, feet wet with when he was playing the role of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. But she's since really evolved way, way beyond that. And she's tried lots of different things on lots of different albums. I'm not super familiar with all that material, but as I've read up on her, she's been sort of searching to find something that's really defines her. And this album, I think, is, is a really a big step in that direction. It combines rock and progressive rock and, and jazz and psychedelia and soul in a very, very unique and distinctive way. I think one of the criticisms that kind of comes up with this album is that it's very reminiscent of like Esmeralda Spalding's more, um, accessible pop work like the Emily's De-Evolution. But truth of the matter is, if you're comparing it to stuff like that, I mean, Esperanza Spalding is a, is a phenomenal musician. And to, even if you're copying that and able to do it in a way that's identifiable, I think that's a compliment. But it blows me away the depth of this album. There's been lots of people that have talked about it. Rick Beato even like stopped what he was doing to do a, a video about some of this stuff because very harmonically complicated songs and odd time signatures with really dense jazz harmonics to them. Um, and even little little flavors, I think, of Eastern music. She likes to play with a little bit of raga in there, or like you know her perception of that style of music, and <clears throat> all these influences kind of congeal, I think, really well in this album, and does something very different, and really pushes, I think, her into a different realm of artistry. Okay, next up I got Low Moons, I Wish You Way More Than Luck. My introduction to this group, the first time I ever really heard them, I was a suggestion from a website called The Prog Mind. They were, that's usually a, a progressive a, a progressive rock channel that leans really heavily on, on progressive metal. But they took a little bit of time to, to focus on this album because it really captures, I think, a very distinctive style of progressive rock that happened kind of in the late 80s. If I was going to compare Low Moon to anything very specifically, it sounds to me like mid-period talk talk, before they kind of went on their mission for the last couple of albums, but after their pop period. The guy's voice leans very heavily, I think, into this sort of fragile, um, a breathy timbre of vocals that you heard Mark Hollis virtually, you know, trademark in the 80s, distinctively his style. But but musically, I think that also leans a little bit more into sort of that progressive pop psychedelia that was happening with bands like Tears for Fears and Simple Minds. So there's definitely an aspect to this album that's very accessible and could be on the radio. It also has a little bit more of an experimental side to it that warrants this consideration, not like as a prog album, but definitely as an album that has influence in prog and probably has a place in the current progressive rock landscape that's so broad in the various styles. I think this kind of can fit in a certain niche in there arguably pretty well. And characteristic of this particular style of kind of like 80s psychedelic progressive rock. It's a very dynamic album, and that's always again a, a very attractive thing where a, a band is able to not just turn anything every up everything up to eleven and, and hang a song on it, but to really show dynamics. I mean, the beginning of this album starts with virtually a whisper and, and fades in, and it keeps that sort of same melancholic feel throughout. Finally, I got Beth Gibbons' Lives Outgrown. And it's been 30 years, I think, since Portishead came out. And I remember the first time I heard Portishead, I was working at Blockbuster Music as a DJ, and somebody had put it on and immediately stopped me in my tracks. And Portishead played a big role for me in the 90s, going on for the next couple albums, really hit a niche that, I mean, there were other bands that were sort of doing that trip-hop thing, but for me, Portishead was like the standard bearer for that for that that style of music, that genre. But after a certain point, you know, I, I kind of lost track of Portishead and wasn't really keeping up, so Beth Gibbons' solo album was the first, you know, thing that I heard from that camp in quite a while. I was very excited to hear this. And arguably the first time I heard it, you know, as much as I love Beth Gibbons as a singer, and as much as she sounds vocally like she still did on, on Portishead, 
this album does not sound like a Portis' album. She hasn't spent a whole lot of time trying to recapture that sound in this album. I mean, directly. And to say it's more lush than Porter's Head seems ridiculous because Porter's Head was known for its lush soundscapes. But I would say that it's a bit more orchestral and a bit more organic. And because of that, it has a broader um, palette in some ways. And once you can kind of shift gears and see like how she's using a different set of sounds on this album... You can now, I can now see the connection to where, where she was coming from with Portishead and how these things connect. It still kind of captures that very gothic, melancholic vibe with a totally different set of sounds. But the real icing on the cake is her vocals. And once you can kind of shift gears on that, her vocal lines are still super evocative and really harken back to the work that she was doing with Portishead, but in a totally different framework. that's all I got for you this time around. So these are all considered to be tier six albums. They're going to be going up against my tier five winners for the uh, end of year top 20. And if you want to be involved with that, please sign up for my Patreon below. Now, if you want to know when other posts are going to happen, please like and subscribe and share the videos out with your friends. Also, follow me over on Spotify. I'm putting all these songs up in this huge list. I'm calling it Dr. Spins Radio. It's very eclectic. Straight through listening might be a little bit jarring, but you'll probably find something in there that you will like if you sit down and check it out. So until I see you next time, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. <laughs>